Good morning, everybody. Um, are you excited about the prospect that Jesus wants to speak to you? I am. And if we go through scripture, we'd be hard pressed to find almost a single page of all of the scriptures where God isn't actually talking through somebody to somebody. It's quite remarkable if we look even from the very first page of the Bible, God is talking. And all of the interactions with all the various characters throughout history that are recorded in scripture, there's loads and loads of two-way conversations. And isn't that a relief (laughs) that we get to hear God as well as tell him things and talk with him. We can expect replies, which I just think is remarkable. And I'm so excited about it today because we've been in this series called Naturally Supernatural. And obviously communication is a natural gift. But when we add God, the most high God, into the mix, it becomes a supernatural gift to be able to speak with God and hear him speak with us remarkable that he would want to do that. He wouldn't need to, really. He's God. He could just blast his words, and that would be that. But actually, he works through us, his people. So let's just have a look at some scriptures that that ground this. So Paul is someone who talks a lot about the gift of prophecy, which is this ability to speak for God. In fact, the Greek word, ready to learn a Greek word this morning, Oh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> yes, my, my husband is. Thanks, thanks for the keenness. Um, so the word for prophecy in the New Testament Greek is profeme. Everyone give me your best profeme. Maybe with a rolled R just to make it authentic. Um, and that actually means, femme means to speak and pro means in place of or before. So we are speaking what an honor for God when we operate in the gift of prophecy. What an amazing honor. So let's just hear what Paul has to say about spiritual gifts. Remind ourselves. This is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7. He says to each one, everyone say each one, and then say me, (laughs) to me is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. This is the making known of God's very presence for everybody's benefit. This is what these gifts are. And here's the list of them. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and interpreting tongues. Just think about that. They're all on offer. And then Paul goes on in 1 Corinthians 14, a couple of chapters later, to say, eagerly desire these spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. (laughs) Especially prophecy. He doesn't say the others aren't so good, but he says, I want you to eagerly desire them, but particularly this gift of speaking out the words of God for one another, for everyone's good, for everyone's benefit. So I thought... I was racking my brains and thinking about characters in scripture that I love following, and I like tracking with a a person's story. So the person I've picked today is Samuel. And so he's um, a character that we start to journey with from a really, really young age. He's a bit of a peculiar start in life. He basically lives in the temple, which is a bit strange in itself, isn't it? He doesn't live with his parents. He lives in the temple. He doesn't really know God. He's there kind of learning and serving. And then something remarkable happens to him one day. So we're going to just look at 1 Samuel chapter 3 and journey with him and then pull out some lessons for ourselves from his life. So this is how it starts. He says, um, this is how um, the writer describes what's happening in his life. The boy Samuel ministered to, uh, sorry, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and there weren't many visions. That's strange, isn't it, to start with? So already we're thinking, what? Where's this going to go? But he's already helping out. But we get the feeling there's not a lot going on interactively between him and God personally there. So I already know before we read on, God's going to have something to do and say into this, isn't he? If there's not much going on, there's not much communication from him, he is going to have something to say. 
So get ready. Then it says this, one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak he could barely see, he was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. So he was already perfectly positioned for something. He was already waiting with someone who couldn't really see, but we'll find out soon he really could see. And then it says this, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. But he muddled up whose voice it was. He ran to Eli and he said, here I am. You called me. And then the same thing happens again. And Eli says, I didn't call. Go back, lie down. So he went and lay down. And then verse 7 says, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Interesting, isn't it? Sometimes our ability to communicate with God shows how much we really know him. I hope today we know him. He knows you. He loves you. He's in relentless pursuit of you. And it says the word of the Lord hadn't yet been revealed to him. Then it happens again. So this is on the third round of Samuel hearing a voice charging over to this old man, Eli. So a third time, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel got up, went to Eli again. He said, here I am, you called me. And then Eli realized what was going on. He realized that the Lord was calling the boy. Then Eli told Samuel, go, lie down. If he speaks to you, say, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now, here is something really interesting, isn't it? Samuel didn't quite know who it was, but he needed the help of somebody else, like a wise, kind, fatherly figure who was older in the faith to help him work out what the voice of God sounded like. I wonder if you've got people you can go to to help you discern what God would sound like when he speaks to you. One of my favorite things that's happened to me in this church is that I had people who have been further along in the faith who helped me work out what God was saying, who sat with me, who explained things to me from scripture that I hadn't quite clicked for myself. And this is often the main benefit of the church, that we help each other out. We're not meant to be on our own independently. We need other people. And so in this moment, Eli says, I can't guarantee that God's going to do this again for you. It's not our job to boss God around or tell him when he goes to speak to you or not. But just in case, get yourself ready in that place. And if he does do it again, this is what you need to do. And so here we have the role of us as the church get ready. God might want to speak to you. Let's help each other work out what we do when he does. And so this is what happened with Eli and to Samuel. So then the Lord came, it says. Isn't that amazing? Jesus comes in our midst. He's already here by the power of his spirit, but it's like we suddenly get a glimpse of what he wants to do and what he wants to say and how he wants to show himself to us. So he came, he stood there, calling, as at the other times, Samuel. Samuel. And then, because Eli had told him what to do, he did it. Samuel said, speak, your servant's listening. And it was at night. They were both lying down. One was actually quite blind, (laughs) but he wasn't blind in lots of ways, was he? He knew that that was the voice of God, and he could let his younger apprentice, Samuel, recognize the voice of God. So in the times of darkness, in the times when we are lying down, we're not even trying to hear God, Jesus comes, God himself comes among us, shows his presence, and starts speaking to us. I wonder when the last time was you sensed him close and talking with you, calling your name, 
getting you ready. He was basically starting this amazing mission off in Samuel's life where he was saying, I'm not just calling your name for the sake of you knowing that I know you. I'm getting you ready for something spectacular. And in that moment, everything changed for Samuel. He would share what Jesus showed him. He'd go on to anoint kings. He'd start speaking with him about his life and about the lives of others. He'd speak into people's homes, their jobs, their families, their pets. Wait for it, we'll get there. And Jesus wants to speak to us about everything in our lives for each other. Our pets, <laughs> ridiculous, I know. I prayed about my hamster the other week, and one of my friends on the team gave me an amazing word to be at peace and trust God, because he's poorly. <laughs> Poor little hamster, so I won't go off and around. <laughs> But he wants to talk with us about our whole lives. He's present right now. He's present in this room. He stands among us. So let's just take a little pause and start to get ourselves ready, activate our senses, train our senses. Jesus is here right now. And just like he came, God came, the fullness of God in the room with Samuel talking calling to him. Just close your eyes for a minute. Just ask Jesus to show you that he's present right now in this room. What does he look like? Where is he standing? Have a look at his feet. Can you see them? Have a look at his face. Have a look at his eyes. Ask him the question, what do you think of me? How would you describe me, God? Speak. Your servant's listening. Samuel started a journey from that conversation with God. A two-way conversation. God called his name, started to show him things. He spoke back. And then we've got a period of time where Samuel's learning, growing, interacting with that faith community. Interacting with the people. He starts to get a bit of a reputation for sharing what God wants to say to people. And chapter 8, we pick it back up again. And Samuel, it says, told all the words of the Lord to the people. And they were asking him for a king. So these prophets in scripture, they had an awful lot of clout. <laughs> people picked rulers because of how people were listening to God. I hope we all listen to God for our rulers, <laughs> for those who lead. And it says in verse 21 of chapter 8 that Samuel heard all the people said. He heard all their cries. I think we need a king. I think we need a king. And he was like, okay, let me go and ask God about it. What an amazing reaction. When we hear people's opinions and people's clamorings, do we go to Jesus and say, what do you want? So he says he repeated all of that before God that everyone was saying. And the Lord answered him. Of course he did. He wants to speak with us about everything. And he said, listen to them, give them a king, if that's what they want. And people were describing Samuel in chapter 9 of 1 Samuel as someone who's highly respected, where everything that he said came true. So let's go. Let's go to him. Let's find out the way he wants us to take that actually isn't his way, it's God's way. Now, there's a funny scenario going on. I said about God wanting to speak about pets even. So there was a chap called Kish, and he had a son called Saul, and he lost 
his donkeys. What a tragedy. <laughs> Anyone lost their donkeys recently? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> but, you know, lost items, lost people, scenarios that are difficult, we don't know what to do. So they started this mad kind of campaign across the land looking for these donkeys, the tragedy of the missing donkeys. But remember, they said... We need to ask Samuel. He'll know what to do. He's got a hotline to God. (laughs) Let's see which way we should go. And so it says that they were going to go and look for they were going to go and look for Samuel. Meanwhile, Samuel's over here, and God is saying, These guys are going to come and look for you. (laughs) So already he's had a prophetic heads up on what's going to happen. This is God speaking again. Sometimes he tells us what's going to happen in the imminent days, or sometimes it's years ahead, years ahead. So the day before, it says in verse 15, before Saul came to look for the donkeys and ask Samuel where they were, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. I wonder whether anyone's helped you brace yourself for what's coming or be encouraged at what's around the corner. Even yesterday, we got a text from somebody, and they said, thanks so much for praying at New Wine. You guys had a real sense that this year was going to be a breakthrough year for my family and the things that we'd been praying for. And over the last six months, everything has come into place. Marriages, babies, all the things that someone had been praying for. And we really had a strong sense to say to this lady, it's going to be accelerated and it's coming soon. Risky, right? But we share and other people weigh. And then the text ended with, with, we are so encouraged in our faith that God knew. (laughs) And all our prayers, all of those prayers. Amazing, isn't it? That God involves us. So this is what then happens. It's quite amazing. So God has given both people a heads up on what to do. And then it says this, this is what Saul is told by Samuel, about this time tomorrow, I'll send you a man from the land of Benjamin. This, sorry, this is God saying this to Samuel, ready for Saul. About this time tomorrow, I'll send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people. He'll deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people. Their cry has reached me. And then Samuel catches sight of Saul. And the Lord says to him, this is the man I spoke to you about. He's going to govern my people. Wow. Isn't that amazing? God knows who's going to do what. God can give us clues about our lives. It's amazing. It's amazing that he can do that. And so then we fast forward And it says that Samuel took a flask of olive oil. He poured it over Saul's head. He kissed him. And he said, has the Lord not anointed you ruler over his own inheritance? And then this is what happens. He says, just flows out of him from bubbles up out of him. He says, when you leave me today, you'll meet two men near Rachel's tomb at Zelza on the border of Benjamin. They'll say to you, the donkeys you set out to look for have been found. Now your father stopped thinking about them. He's now worried about you. And he's asking, what shall I do about my son? This is how clearly God can talk. <laughs> I mean, I hope this is getting you on the edge of your seats with expectation about what God could do with us. He says, then you'll go on from there. You'll reach the great tree of Tabor. Three men going up to worship God at Bethel will meet you there. One will be carrying three goats, another three loaves of bread, another a skin of wine. They'll greet you and offer you two loaves of bread, which you will accept from them. After that, it goes on to say, as you approach the town, you're going to meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with lyres, timbrels, pipes and harps being played before them, and they will be prophesying. The spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you. You will prophesy with them and you will be turned into a different person. Wow. This is the power of of the Spirit of God. This is what happens when we get together around people who are listening to the voice of God and sharing it. It starts to catch. We learn and we grow, and it's quite remarkable. Then he says this to him as his kind of 
parting greeting to Saul. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God is with you. As Saul Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart and all these signs were fulfilled. (laughs) There we go. His whole life has changed. He thought he just went to this guy to ask about his dad's donkeys and ends up being told, you're going to lead this nation. (laughs) I wonder what God wants to say to you today. He knew so much about what Saul was going to be facing, who he was going to be meeting, what he was going to be doing. Listen to these words from Jeremiah for us today, from chapter 33. The Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name, call to me. I'll answer. I'll show you great unsearchable things that you do not know. That's what he wants to do with us. Paul prays that God would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, that we would know God better. And the writer of Proverbs warned us that if we haven't got any prophetic vision, we start to go all over the place. We cast off restraint, is what it says. So anytime we hear the Lord... We, we hear in part and we prophesy in part. We often get like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle that somebody else might have given another piece in, someone else might have given another piece in, and we put it all together, and it seems to match and take us in a God direction. It seems to clarify what God wants to do in us. And I remember praying about whether I should be moving, when we move back to Cheltenham, what we should be doing. And so I said to people, could you just listen to the Lord about whether I should come back on the team here at Trinity? So a, an elderly lady, she sent a message over by text saying, I think you should join back in with the team. A guy messaged me on Facebook saying, random, I haven't spoken to you for years, but I feel like God wants to send you back to old familiar ground, which was quite strange. And then I'm just going to play this because this is really fun. Um, I had a voice note left on my phone and it was one of those accidental voicemails. Do you know that? When someone pocket calls you. And this is from an 0800 number. And listen to what it said. It'll come in a second, hopefully. Maybe not. Take up that job. Because, bruh, I... Oh, I've got to go again. Sorry about that. Crackly for a while. I might have to take up that, 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 that job. Take up that job. Because, bruh, I... Because, bro. (laughs) And that was it. That's literally all that was on my phone. Don't know who it was. Don't know who they were. Turns out when I Googled the number, it was a Sky call center. And he was obviously just having a conversation, but it lined up with everything else. Isn't life fun with God? (laughs) You're just like, what? (laughs) So I had like people who I really trusted saying, do this. And then a random guy at a Sky call center, like sealing the deal. So I rang Andrew. I was like, okay, (laughs) I'll come back. (laughs) But you see, we want God to speak to us, don't we? About our jobs, about our friends, about our lives for one another, the excitement of sharing a journey with other people and listening to God is just fantastic. So these are kind of the terms and conditions, I just thought I'd let you know, that when we hear God, we share it for somebody else, but they have to weigh it. Okay, so some people saying, I think God is saying this, we have to weigh it. I think there should be a slide, Jacob, thank you, that it should sound like God, his heart and his character. It should reflect his eternal word. We always go back to scripture and say, is that what God's saying? Double check it. The general picture through scripture, where things are repeated. And then a shared sense of agreement from others. Like I had that weird voice note, but I also had two others. I always say minimum of three things. You know, God God spoke to Samuel three times. I just think it's just a good idea to check it three times. 
that you've got a similar thing. And so we're going to have a go in a minute and a little bit of a practice. But um, I just thought I'd remind us of all the different ways that God might want to speak to us. He might want to speak to us as we're journaling. Sometimes you just find you write something. And as you're communicating with God like a letter, he starts writing back. That happened in Scripture. There were loads of letters written to churches from people. Sometimes it just like bubbles up and you end up saying something and you think, oh, maybe that was the Lord. Or you walk in a shop and there's a song playing and that's exactly what you needed to hear that was coming out. Um, Sometimes it's a phrase that's coming out of scripture, just jumping out before you. Sometimes it's a dream at night. Sometimes it's a vision in the day. Sometimes it's just noting something in your everyday life, and it becomes a metaphor for what God wants to do or say to you. So the prophet Jeremiah is a great example of that. And just look through scripture and just find all these places that God spoke in different ways. But, you know, Jeremiah just stands at the potter's house. We don't know whether it's in a vision in his mind or whether he's physically walked there. But he says, you know, I'm going down to this house. I saw the potter working on the wheel. The pot got a bit out of shape, so the potter turned it into another pot as it seemed best to him. And then the word of God came to Jeremiah just as he's looking. And the Lord said to him, Can I not do with you as this potter does? Like clay in my hand are you. So what might God want to say to you? There's Scripture is totally, totally full of metaphors and ways that God communicates. You know, it says, you know, if you go to someone's house too much, it's like eating too much honey. Someone's obviously done that in the Bible, and it's written in Proverbs. You know, meddling in a quarrel is like grabbing a passing dog by the ear. It's a really graphic picture that someone's noticed. So we're looking all the time for God speaking his wisdom to us. Other pictures are, you know, the the church is literally described as a body. We're meant to fit together without us all listening to God with each other and for each other. We're, it's like we've chopped a bit off. We're not part of what God wants us to do. And then the really graphic one, judging someone is like walking around with a massive plank in your eye. I mean, that has got to hurt, right? (laughs) And you can't see clearly when we've got judgments over us. It's really amazing metaphors. And then there's times when I've just had a sense to look at my phone and it said 1111. And I felt like the Lord go, double blessings, (laughs) You know, and for other people, it might mean something else, or they might look up a scripture that those numbers meant. But it's a really fun adventure listening to God for one another and sharing. And um, so we're just going to have a little bit of a practice, if that's all right. And if you're um, new or you would struggle with um, joining in with someone else, I want to encourage you, do try, but don't feel we're forcing you. So full permission to join in or not. (laughs) But I would love you to all join in and have a go at this because it's a bit like a divine laboratory in a church sometimes. We get to practice because then we can have a go outside. So let me just pray that the Holy Spirit anoints us to listen because Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So that's Jesus's promise to you. So take the pressure off you and just put your hand over your chest if you want to. I find it helpful to sort of connect Jesus, I thank you that you love us, that you stand among us, that you speak with us. And thank you for this amazing gift that you've given us to speak for you, to hear your voice and pass it on for others. I release that gift of prophetic listening over us as a family in the name of Jesus that spirit of prophecy, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, would it come to us because of you, Holy Spirit. Your spirit comes into us now. And we trust our brains to be the mind of Christ, that we'd know your thoughts, Lord. So if you're watching online, you can do this for yourself or pick a person and that you know and just jot the things down. So what we're going to do now is um, find somebody who's sitting near you who you don't know very well. (laughs) Or isn't related, I guess, is probably a better one, because you can do it for friends. And your first question, 
This is like Jeremiah. He looked around the room and he saw something significant in something. So pick an object. It could be anything in this room. Anything at all. Could be a chair, could be a pillar, could be the balcony, could be a window, anything. And just ask God the question, how are you like that? And what do you want to show about yourself through that object? Go. Just do it really quickly. We're going to do it really fast. And remember, everything we share, this is... You know, we're practicing Christians, so we're having a practice. So be kind. (laughs) And then tell the other person what you were thinking. And good practice is to match it up with a Bible verse if you can. Have a go. This is a safe place to practice and test. Well done, everyone. Ready for another one? Okay, this one is, you can do one or the other of this one. So full permission. Um, If we could have the next slide. Thanks, Jacob. So either what Bible character comes to mind as you look at them and why, or what colour they are and why, what that represents to you. So you might want to say something like, I see you a bit like Mary, or I was reminded of the colour yellow, that makes me feel, dot, 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 that God might want to say that. Okay, next one. So here's three questions. Ask the Lord to show you how he saw them when they were born. Get a little phrase in your mind. What does God think of them now? And is there anything he wants to say about their future? It doesn't need to be really long sentences. It could just be one word. And I did this in Sweden a few weeks ago, one month ago, actually. And what the person said to me made me cry. So we've got tissues available. (laughs) In a good way. Cry in a good way. Just to clarify. And I'm just going to... I love the chattering. It's amazing. I'm just going to pray this scripture over us because this is Paul's prayer. And then feel free to carry on practicing, (laughs) listening to God, sharing his heart, how he feels about the person. Maybe there's other things he wants to say. Maybe there's a scripture that comes to your mind as well. Share it. And remember the rules are we share. And then the person that you've shared with, they take it away and they weigh it. Test it for themselves. So this is the prayer that Paul prayed. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you would know him better. So Jesus, would we hear you communicate with us a two-way conversation, just like we saw all the way through your word with people in history that we would have that in us, your spirit of wisdom and revelation, to know you better and to know what you would want to say to others through us. And we just echo the words that Samuel said, that he was advised by that amazing wise man, Eli, to say to you, Lord, speak, your servants listening. And would everything change for us, even the times if we're lying down in the darkness God, thank you that even just one word from you calling our name could change everything. And I thank you that none of us are here by accident. That we're your family. And you trust us with your word. You said your sons and daughters 
will prophesy. And here we are, God. Well done for joining in. Very proud of you all. And take those little exercises, do them in the week, text people, pick a person every day and do a different one on them. And just say, I have a sense that God might want to say this to you. I literally text people who aren't Christians sometimes if I'm reading scripture and say, you know, I just read this and thought of you, or I just had a picture in my mind of you. I think it's from God. What do you reckon? (laughs) Come back to me.